The Moon's greatest crater, the 1,240 mile wide and 4 billion year old South Pole Aitken Spa Basin, is hiding something massive and metallic between its surface, according to Baylor University researchers who discovered it and disclosed it to the rest of the world. Imagine burying an amount of metal five times larger than the big island of Hawaii underground. That's roughly the amount of unexpected mass discovered. Massive discoveries like this have the potential to shed light on the formation of all rocky bodies, including our own planet. It's a discovery that scientists are still trying to figure out. What caused the 4.8 quintillion pound increase? What is it made of exactly? Let's find out. It has been 53 years since the first human walked on the moon. Our understanding of the planet's nearest neighbor has advanced and so has our passion for it. Researchers have uncovered something big lying beneath the far side of the moon, an unexplained blob the size of a five times larger than the big island of Hawaii lump of metal. Geophysical research letters recently described the structure located at least 180 miles between the South Pole Aitken Spa Basin, a massive crater carved into the lunar landscape billions of years ago when the moon's initially molten surface had cooled just enough for impacts to leave a permanent mark. Data from NASA's Gravity Recovery and Interior Laboratory GRAIL mission and topography from the Lunar Reconnaissance Orbiter we used to find the strange blob. Refinement of previous calculations for the thickness of the crater's crust and density of the mantle was made possible by this new information, which revealed the unusual surplus of mass in the mantle. The data provides a hazy picture of what's going on both above and below the ground. Gravity is stronger when there is more mass, such as a higher topography or denser rocks. These maps show a clear distinction between the Spa Basin and most of the Moon's big craters. Mascons, short for mass concentrations, are found in other huge craters. Mascons, discovered by NASA's Jet Propulsion Laboratory in 1968, appear in gravity maps as bullseyes, a core circle of high gravity surrounded by a ring of weak gravity and then another ring of stronger gravity. The phenomena occur as a result of how the low-density crust and high-density mantle adjust following a collision. However, there is no comparable trend in the spa basin. To find out what was going on beneath the surface, the scientists used mathematics to create a model that more properly reflected the natural system, based on new assumptions about the forces at work. The result revealed a vast zone of dense material within the upper mantle of the Moon. Is this a core relic? The subsurface bulk could be explained by one of two scientists' theories. As a first possibility, it could be a residue of dense oxides that developed during the last phase of cooling when ancient lava oceans covered the Moon. However, the researchers don't have a mechanism to explain how such a layer formed particularly beneath the basin. The mass could have come from an ancient impactor, as suggested by the scientists. When the Moon's massive basin was formed, the space rock that formed it was likely large enough to divide into layers, resulting in a dense metallic core and rocky outer layers, similar to many of today's planets. The impact energy produced a deep, bowl-shaped crater on the Moon on the fateful day of its contact, with the impactor's metallic core smashed up inside. However, the original hole did not persist long and the Moon's crater was partially filled with molten rock. The melty residues of the ancient impactor's core lingered within it. While the extra mass isn't visible on the surface, it appears to be having an impact, pushing the lunar terrain down into a strange ovoid depression that lies more than half a mile lower than the surrounding crater floor a phenomenon known as the Central Depression. It was also discovered that previous estimates of the size of the crater's inner rim were significantly off. This information could be critical, as NASA and others plan missions to the basin and the nearby South Pole of the Moon. 
The Clementine mission, which had a gap near the basin's southern end, was used by the last researchers to determine these boundaries. According to new research using data from the LRO and GRAIL, the crater is about 40 miles larger than previously estimated. As a whole, this study adds to the growing sense of intrigue in the South Pole Aitken Basin. According to Sara Mazrui of Western University Center for Planetary Science and Exploration, who was not a part of the research, it's just so mysterious. And by improving our understanding of this structure, scientists hope to better understand the formation of bodies throughout our celestial family. Little objects colliding and gradually producing bigger things are the origin of every planet in our solar system. Plate tectonics on Earth has been slowly destroying the planet's ancient surface and its record of early impacts. The Moon, on the other hand, with its billion-year-old surface, provides a remarkable record of what happened when our solar system was a baby, including the spectacular events that generated one of the largest known impact basins in our cosmic neighborhood. We don't know enough about the actual process that created the Spa Basin. This is a massive, massive, massive field of ongoing research. It's the largest preserved crater in the solar system that we're aware of. The unusual masses finding adds to the mystery, especially because the crater and the neighboring lunar South Pole are both prospective targets for future missions to the Moon. The mass has already piqued the interest of scientists. Such an investigation could shed light on the history of the crater's formation and help us better understand how our Moon and other celestial bodies expand over time. China's U-22 mission, on the other hand, has made another fascinating discovery on the Moon's far side. The rover's panoramic camera picked out two little complete orbs of clear glass glistening among the dry grey dust. These spherules can store data about the Moon's past, such as the makeup of its mantle and impact occurrences. Although U-22 was unable to gather compositional data, these natural lunar marbles may prove to be valuable research targets in the future. As it turns out, glass isn't rare on the Moon. When silicate material is heated to a high temperature, the substance develops and both of these constituents are abundantly available on the Moon. There was widespread volcanism in the lunar past which resulted in the development of volcanic glass and collisions from smaller objects like meteorites also formed glass. According to a team of scientists led by planetary geologist Zi Yong Shao of Sun Yat-sen University and the Chinese Academy of Sciences, the latter could be the cause of the spherules seen by U-22. Since most of the glass found on the Moon so far appears to be different from that recovered by U-22, it is difficult to say for sure. Some of the spherules are smaller than a millimetre in diameter. During an impact on Earth, such tiny glass spherules are formed, generating such intense heat that the crust melts and sprays into the atmosphere. The molten substance cools and condenses into tiny glass beads. The spherules of U-22 are substantially larger, measuring 15 to 25 millimeters across. Glass balls up to 40 millimeters across were found on the Moon's near side during the Apollo 16 mission, but that doesn't make them unique. These have been linked to a nearby crater and are likewise likely to be impact spherules. However, there are some notable variations between the two findings. According to Xiao and his colleagues, the far side spherules appear to be translucent or semi-transparent and have a vitreous sheen. They discovered four other spherules with a similar shine, but their translucency could not be confirmed, in addition to the two that appear to be translucent. It is possible that these spherules developed during lunar meteorite impacts, but it's also possible that they were previously existing buried beneath the surface and were only excavated by impacts. According to the experts, the most likely explanation is that they formed from anorthosite, a volcanic glass that melted on contact and reformed as translucent round blobs. The researchers wrote in their report, the unique morphology, geometry and local context of these glass globules 
are compatible with being anorthositic impact glasses. This might turn the objects into lunar versions of terrestrial tektites, which are pebble-sized glassy objects formed when Earth material melts, sprays into the air, and then hardens and shapes into a ball as it falls back down, much like those tiny spherules. If these are lunar tektites, they may be widespread on the Moon's surface. We won't know for sure until we examine their composition. The team believes this opens up exciting new avenues of investigation in the future. Some scientists believe that the spheres were created long ago during volcanic eruptions on the Moon and that they were dug by a recent meteorite crash, melted and reformed into translucent blobs again. If the theory is correct, there will likely be many more similar spheres on the lunar surface, the composition of which can be investigated to learn more about the Moon's past. If that's the case, the Chinese have plenty of experience transporting samples from the Moon back to Earth. In the meantime, attempts to get people back to the Moon are soaring. According to NASA, the next opportunity to land American astronauts on the Moon will be in 2024. Perhaps we'll get a better glimpse at the Moon's massive metallic and glass mystery. Thanks for watching another episode of Voyager. While you're still here, make sure to click the video on your screen for more mind-blowing videos about space.